Mitral regurgitation refers to reverse flow of blood from the left ventricle back into the left atrium via the mitral valve during systole. In healthy individuals, the mitral valve allows one-way flow of blood from the left atrium to the left ventricle. The mitral valve should be closed during systole, which only allows blood to flow from the left ventricle to the aorta. The term systole refers to a phase of the cardiac cycle in which the ventricular contraction and the atrial relaxation occur. And the word regurgitation simply refers to blood or fluid or any other material moving backwards. As the left ventricle contracts, the mitral valve closes and the aortic valve opens. The oxygenated blood from the left ventricle flows through the aortic valve into the aorta to be supplied to the rest of the body. The mitral valve regurgitation is always caused by the incomplete closure of the mitral valve, regardless of underlying etiology. Chronic regurgitation can lead to left ventricular failure, pulmonary venous hypertension, and pulmonary edema. Mitral regurgitation is the most common valvular abnormality worldwide. Anatomy The mitral valve is one of the four valves of the heart. It's located between the left atrium and the left ventricle. The mitral valve is also known as the bicuspid valve, or as the left atrioventricular valve. As the word bicuspid indicates, the mitral valve has two cusps, or two leaflets, the anterior leaflet and the posterior leaflet, which sit within the mitral annulus. The mitral annulus is the junctional zone which separates the left atrium and the left ventricle, and serves as an insertion site for the leaflets. The annulus is oval in shape. The mitral valve is the only valve that has two leaflets. The chordae tendinae, which literally means tendinous cords, are the thin, fibrous cords of connective tissue that resemble strings that connect the leaflets of the mitral valve to the papillary muscles. Mitral regurgitation can be classified either on the basis of etiology, that is, primary or secondary, or according to onset, that is, acute or chronic. Primary mitral regurgitation is also known as degenerative or organic. Primary mitral regurgitation involves structural damage. Any physical damage to or deformity of the leaflets, chordae, and or papillary muscles causes leaflets to close incompletely and results in mitral regurgitation. The most common cause is mitral valve prolapse. Other examples include mitral annular calcification, ruptured chordae tendinae, papillary muscle rupture, and leaflet perforation. The chest x-rays, close-ups of PA and lateral views show mitral annular calcification and the calcification is far more obvious on the lateral view, visible as an incomplete ring of bony density. Secondary mitral regurgitation is also known as functional or ischemic, happens as a result of ischemia or cardiomyopathy. While there's no physical damage to the valve itself, the ischemic changes, for example, can lead to mitral annular dilation or displacement of papillary muscles causing retrograde flow from incomplete closure of the mitral valve leaflets. Acute mitral regurgitation needs surgical intervention on an urgent basis. The two main causes of acute mitral regurgitation are papillary muscle dysfunction and chordae tendinae rupture. Papillary muscle dysfunction almost always occurs as a result of myocardial infarction, which is another word for heart attack. Acute mitral regurgitation may cause acute pulmonary edema and cardiogenic shock or even death. Acute dysfunction of the mitral valve leads to volume overload and symptoms of acute heart failure. Chronic mitral regurgitation initially produces mild symptoms or no symptoms, and for this reason, it can be difficult to diagnose. It's characterized by gradual enlargement of the left atrium, left ventricle, and eccentric hypertrophy which initially compensates for regurgitant flow to maintain forward stroke volume, but eventually decompensates. 
it affects the left ventricular ejection fraction over time, leading to heart failure. Possible causes of mitral valve regurgitation include mitral valve prolapse, chordae tendinae rupture, rheumatic fever, endocarditis, myocardial infarction, cardiomyopathy, congenital heart defects, certain drugs, radiation therapy, atrial fibrillation.